education taxes anyway, but uh, in a lot of ways, these are, you know, <laughs> to draw a parallel back to conservatism versus liberalism and socialism, they're re-education camps. That's what's going on. The, our scores as in math and science as you compete with the rest of the world com continue to plummet. And so what they're learning are these, these qualities that are not useful only to the extent that it allows you to be part of the mob yelling shame, shame, shame. Rather than teaching folks, kids especially, that they have something special inside of them. And that that is for them. And sometimes for them only. And the notion that one of the coolest things is having an idea and keeping it to yourself. The joy that is found in self-reflection rather than the joy that can be found in response and stimuli from others. So that's, you know, on the decline. It's why I, I end up politically on our side. Um, I trust what has been going on for thousands of years and what has worked for thousands of years more than I trust the latest fad. Um, I'll put my money on what I know works. And often what works is not easy. Often what works is not cheap. Um, often what works is, you know, if you want something to happen, I tell some of the young people in the office, of whom I'm so proud, so many of them, who sort of digest this way of practicing politics that we practice here, of kindness and decency, and being willing to take a punch and then throw one back. Um, but not unnecessarily. Uh, it, I told a, a, a young man I, that he says, you gave us this great idea and it was all your thing and now it's a big hit and we've got you know 100 people down in the hub waiting in line. He's like, it was all you, Ian. I said, no, you executed it. I came up with the idea. Don't sell yourself short. Um, you built this thing from nothing into something. The ability to do that, to exercise, even just the smallest bit of self-sufficiency is the American ideal in my mind. To say that, you, you know, this is you know, manifest destiny. This is leaving uh, a, a foreign country to travel for two weeks to come here and take that risk and to own the consequences of that risk. There ain't nobody else's fault but yours if the ship sinks. You got on the ship. And to know be able to calculate the risk on your own and do what it takes to overcome it. Instead, we've got this other end of it that is about, I have an opinion and my opinion will be respected. I don't understand it. It is, it's the, it is the way the other side speaks. You may understand it better than I do. Um, I did not grow up believing that my opinion should be respected or frankly mattered at all. Uh, but what's happened is that it turns out with a lot of hard work, a lot of sweat, a lot of suppression of the self, my opinion began to matter. And you know, it's almost, it's almost comical to me that my opinion has impact and resonates and in a, a circumstance like CPAC, in a setting like CPAC, can reverberate to the extent that it does here in this room and with all of the cameras and with all of the reporters. And it's a heavy burden. It's not something that I take lightly, knowing that each word that I utter in this context can be framed as speaking on behalf of all of us, all conservatives across America. It's serious business. And look, I'm not perfect. I make a, you know, a dozen healthy screw-ups every day. Hopefully they're little screw-ups, but sometimes I make big screw-ups. You gotta own it, you take responsibility. Don't blame someone else. This team over here, it's, it's okay. Your circumstances led you to make that screw-up. It's someone else's fault. Tell us what you feel now. It doesn't better society, it doesn't help the person get to the next thing. Uh, and we're experiencing the repercussions of that. You have a question? What are the best strategies for dealing with character attacks and opinion attacks? 
I used to teach classes at LI about press strategies and stuff, and inevitably how to run a, a, a comms shop in a campaign or for associations and lobbies. And inevitably, and I don't mean to relate this uh, uh, to you or the question, this is just an intro to uh, my answer. Inevitably, uh, somebody would stand up and say, when do we leak? When do we start leaking? You know, how do we do the deep throat thing and you know, start moving pieces and hanging out in parking garages and saying, uh, this, is, this is Woodward, is this Woodward? But there's a, you know, and I always told uh, whoever asked that question that it's, that's the wrong question to ask. The better route politically and in a co political communications way is to wrestle with what's right and wrong, reach into yourself, to your character, to your decency, and figure out how to do the right thing. You know, when I'm in a pickle, I say, well, this is a bad situation. If I go this way, it's a bad situation. I'm like, okay, screw it. I'm going to do what's right. And I get to work with people like Matt Schlapp and Dan Schneider who, who operate the same way. So there's strength in numbers when the attacks come in. You know, you have to gauge each attack for what it is. Who's throwing it at you? You know, there's, I often talk of things like a political equation. If the attack is coming from your little sister, eh, swatted away like a fly. Is the attack coming from a peer, somebody who exists on your own level? Well, you should address it on equal terms. If the attack, God forbid, is coming from someone with a larger megaphone than you have who is out to destroy you, then you better fight back hard. You better pull out all the stops. This is a David and Goliath type of situation. So one, evaluate the attack. Two, what is it that you want to say? Do you want to defend yourself? Do you want to counterpunch? Do you want to take a cheap shot? And you better be thinking three to six moves ahead. So before you punch back, have your next six punches ready to go. Contingency plan, plan Bs, a game plan, an exit strategy for every possible outcome. Then what I do is I reverse engineer it. I say, what's the outcome I want, the desired outcome? And what will it take for me to get there? Say, well, I need this atmosphere to exist before I can get there. And so what steps do I need to, to take in order to get to that ideal circumstance that, oh, well, I can just push over the line? So it's a big picture thing. You have to step back, take a look uh, at what's happening, get outside of yourself a little bit, know what's inside of yourself, and then get ready to fight. But not with your little sister. Never punch down. It's unbecoming and tends to backfire. So if the attacks are coming from someone who is lower on the food chain, shall we say, than you are, let it ride, baby. It's always best to swing up. Swing at targets that are larger than yourself. Go big. Don't try to crush the little guy. Again, this goes back to the a sort of moral component, right and wrong. Lift the little guy up. You know? That's sort of what's gotten forgotten about in a lot of this is how we can support one another. How you turn attacks into opportunities. And sometimes it gets very difficult. You know, I was backstage with the people that run this. I say, I've got a problem. They say, you have an opportunity. Now, I know that that's kind of Stuart Smalley, uh, but it's a good lesson for politics. If you can do that mental exercise, um, you'll be in good shape. Are we good on time? Two more minutes, one more question. Yes. Launching? Launching the attack. Okay. I've been stopped several times. Yep. I'm on the property launch. Yep. Launch. Me too. Yeah, exactly. I have a great company. You know, so it's like both of us are usually, you know, you just want to just want to tear up, but you know so I mean there's there there are hate group in the in the south. 
I got to uh, take a wonderful trip this summer with my wife and kids and with Ollie North and some friends, and we took a boat from Paris to Normandy. It was all this World War II stuff. I'll put it to you this way. They didn't decide to invade Normandy overnight. It took months and months and months of preparation and planning. And so attacking without months, in some cases, in lots of cases, months of planning, runs a higher risk of being unsuccessful and being frivolous and a waste of your time and ineffective. It's all about the plan. Have the plan. Have the different uh, uh, options for how this could go wrong. And then do the work. No cheating. And it's ultimately worth it. You know what I'm saying? Well, you've got to define, define what victory is. What is the win for you? Is it, you know, getting your name off the list? Is it getting their accounts shut down? Is it exposing their real identities? You know, you've got to, what is that desired outcome? That's step one. What do you want to have happen when it's all said and done? And then narrowly chart your course for that destination. It requires staying focused and being prepared for just about anything. It means you've done, it means you've done something. Okay, guys. I'm being told I have to go. I have to go do something on, on the stage. I really appreciate you being here. And if you want to continue the conversation, I feel like we're cutting you off a little bit on minutes. But if you want to continue the conversation, feel free to just come up to me and say, I was in that session, and I wanted to ask you about this. Okay, guys? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.